The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for the one and only Larry Pesavento today. And uh, Larry's away. So that I want you to show you the, the TLT, the Lehman 20-year Treasury Bond ETF, is down $1.21 at $131.23. Made a high yesterday of $132.58. Uh, let me just show you this real quickly for those of you who are not used to my work. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the lowest low bar, merely count each successively higher peak uh, and label them alphabetically on the way up. We can go to uh, seven peaks, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, but it's at the fourth highest peak, peak D, that other things can happen. What do I mean by that? That's where you can have a, you'll see many of the charts I showed today. At peak D, you get a much bigger pullback, or it could recycle and start a brand new buy mode. I only look at three patterns straight up and straight down. That's a straight line. Or I look at an arch or a curve. Those arches or curves could be made up of an inverted V or a V-shaped pattern, but it's the same thing going from one level, rallying, coming back to that level, testing it, break that level of support. You can go lower, and on the upside, you break that level of resistance, you can go higher. And you can get a mix of the two, but it's basically the same three patterns. Straight up, straight down, arch, straight up, straight down. In this case, down, makes an arch formation like a lowercase h, Test the left side low, breaks it. You have to do an analysis there. Sometimes it can continue and make another arch. So it looks like a lowercase m, and that can keep going for a couple of times. And on the upside is the break of the upside in the inverted y pattern. All right, let's get out of that. Here we go. How does that fit here? Look, here's your cup pattern. It's called the Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle because it went right through 126.69. It's gone all the way to 132.58. Normally in this pattern, I'd be saying, uh, there could be a left side, a, a test of the left side high, 126.69. That's a long way down. So a lot has to happen. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, there could be a high-level consolidation of the bonds here. And that would mean that rates, yeah, but they, they move a little bit higher, but then they stall. So this is going to be very important. What happens? Look at the power of this move. With the, I use technical analysis in the sense that I use the standard tools, MACD, the stochastic. I use a slow stochastic. Moving averages, Larry does not do that. Of course, he looks at butterfly patterns. You can even see there's some butterfly patterns within here. What we're looking at is this leg E in the weekly chart has a strong MACD, and the stochastic is flat at 94%. If the stochastic is going to stay in the 90% area, that's going to suggest two things for me, at least the way I look at the market. It means that this market is still going to be under pressure because money is going to be coming out of the volatility, meaning the downside action of stocks, and come into the safety of bonds. That's really what we're looking at right now. Look at this mon monthly chart. Huge leg A pulls back a little bit. Huge leg B pulls back a little bit. And now a huge leg C. But the difference is suddenly we're actually going into the next month. This is the month of June with a slightly higher high. There is a difference here. And if you look at the technicals, you're getting what I call a Chapman Wave squash. And that's usually very powerful for a move to a leg C in the chart that you're looking at. And then you can pull back as the stochastic starts to uh, take a bit of a breather and the MACD's momentum. So the torque of the stochastic pushes it up, pushes the price up. The MACD uh, fast moving average, the nine period differential, this green line on the right side chart, daily, weekly, on the right is the monthly. Um, holds the price. So this is going to be very important. What happens in June? And my suspicion is we're going to see a pretty choppy June. Uh, we could see some kind of a rally here. I believe for my subscribers to my opening call, we're in a position where we're actually short the Dow from the day before the uh, recovery high back in April. And we remain short, taking quite a bit of profits on the way down. But we've also got a long position, and this is the way it is, just a short-term trading position. We'll see if that happens. All right, let's get to some other nitty-gritties here. The esoteric, because I wanted to show you crude oil at this particular point has had the, the, a, a big arch formation 
Look at this weekly chart. Look at that H pattern. It goes 7690 back in October of 2018 down to 42.60 in December. This long-legged doji candle starts to move up, goes to a peak C, hits the 200 period moving average, that orange line. Resistance, how many times? Five times, four times it hits it. Once it goes over it, but it cannot close above it. Now it's on the way down. It's below the nine and the 14 period moving averages. This is going to be very important for crude oil. It's also telling me about the overall economy. And it's saying there's some weakness right now. And that's represented, at least for me, by the, um, by the uh, crude oil. So uh, I'm, I am looking at strong support at the 52. In the 52s, that goes back to February's lows. For about four weeks, it was trading, uh, tra treating 52 as a support level. If it closes under 52, that's a big problem. My thing is, there could be a little bit of a bounce here, but a little bit of a bounce, better be turned into a bigger bounce going back to the 56s, or else crude oil is going to be stuck. And if you put it together with uh, Dr. Copper, remember Copper International uh, demonstration of buying and selling, of, uh, certainly in the building area. So copper is down again. It's a 2.64. It's gone from the peak D. Here we are. There's that peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology. And it goes all the way from the three level down to where we are in right now. And the MACD and stochastic in the weekly chart are very weak. Monthly chart doesn't look all that good. And I usually like to put it together with wood, which is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, which is made of full arch formation. This is the lowercase H. Let me just show you once again so that you can see patterns repeat over and over. Look at this pattern. Here it is. And so as we just saw in crude oil, we've just seen it now in the wood iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF trading at 55.38. Uh, at the close yesterday, a little bit of a bounce. Wow, it 55.06 was the low back in December, the week of the last week of December, and last week's low was 55. Round number closed with a 54.33 low. Took out that low, but it hasn't closed below. Yes, it did. 55, it closed six cents lower. Hmm, that says watch out because any rally now should have limited upside to at best 59, and then you could make another arch formation. This is a very important uh, moment for uh, the iShares of the global timber and forestry ETF. Let's get to a question I had. What was the question? Um, could I look at, ooh, I had it. Oh, NQ. Uh, NQ, which is a NASDAQ. Yeah, this is a continuous contract made a peak E double top in the Chapman Wave back in April into the uh, into May the 1st. And then it pulls back really sharply, goes to a low yesterday. Uh, this is really important because it goes from the 79, 79 area down to the low of 69.41. So that's a thousand point. That, that's a big move down. And you can see a monthly chart made an all time high just above the previous sign in a V-shaped pattern, come back a little more than I would have anticipated based just on the pattern itself with a 9, with a 14 period exponential moving average support in the monthly chart right at 7,081. So it went lower than that, but it's above, oh, now it's just still a little bit below that, it was 7,060. Really important that there's some kind of a rally of at least sustainability for at least three days we want to see. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, the host of the Tiger Traditions Hour at News, sitting in for Larry Pesavento, and I'll be right back in a few minutes. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I was at a question about whether well, if I could look at the continuous contract of in a New York Harbor blend stock or BOB. Um, it's trading right now at 1.71. I don't really see anything here. Um, a, B, made a peak C in the weekly, sitting on the 200 period moving average of the weekly. This is a problem. These, uh, yeah, it's all these red candles says at any moment you can have a green candle, but at 1.71, I would just put it this way, that the, the stochastics at 5% trying to turn. So today is a really important day to at least attempt an upturn, but it isn't the upturn that counts. What I, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is so heavily negative that it's going to take at least two or three attempts. In other words, there could be a rally, then a retest, and then another rally. So I'm going to put it this way. Today is Tuesday, uh, June the 4th. Oh, you're short, short from 2772. Okay, and if that's the case, then you've been I, perfect. Okay, as I'm looking at it right now, the weekly chart is suggesting that there could be a bounce, but there's a really good chance that it's going to have to go and test the one point. This I'm looking at this on the continuous contract. So, um, 1.714. Yes, I'm just going to say to you, any rally to sustain itself has to see the MACD turn up and the stochastic go from the 5% level at least to 15% and then 20%. That's going to take a little while. I think there's going to be continuous pressure to this continuous contract. So unless it's trading at 1.94, uh, is that an 8? Yeah, 1.84, I'm sorry, 1.84 by within 10 days. I'm going to give it a full 10 days. I, this is, it's just going to do a lot of retesting and that 200 period moving average of 1.78 right now is, that doesn't look good at all. How, you, how could you be short from that level? Are we looking at the same contract? We can't be looking at the same contract. You're short from 2772. Um, oh, okay, I must be looking at something wrong. So that's what you're looking at. Uh, I, you've got the Z, I've got the RB and I've got at RB. Is it? Let me just go RBZ for the moment to see if I can do something different. RBZ. 
I'm still in the one point. Um, did you mean two or one? One point two seven seven two. Yeah, you must be one. So um, I, I'm just saying to you, I think that you're in the absolute the, the, the right position that rallies are going to probably fail and there's going to be a lot more testing before it can have a, a V-shape. And this is spectacular news. A V-shape recovery just doesn't look like it's in the cards. You could have a little bit of a bounce to make an arch formation. I think you're looking good there. I can just tell you this, that if it takes out this low of the 50 week of the 15th, 1.444, Mm, that's a real problem. So that's the way I'm looking at it right there. Okay, now let's do a couple of things because um, before the opening bell, just got a few minutes, let me just run this quickly. The YM, this is the, the Dow futures, the continuous contract, trading right now up 198. There's a little news report here that says uh, Trump, US is committed to a phenomenal trade deal with the UK. You remember, phenomenal today is unphenomenal tomorrow. This is a, this is a, this is a negotiating tactic. So I, I'm not using any um, descriptive words right now, other than to say, uh, let's look at the charts as they are. And we're up 202 in the futures in the Dow. This is a really good sign. One of the reasons I'll explain. One of the reasons why I, I said to subscribers yesterday, we're going to take a position on the long side. Uh, of the Dow is because within the context, look at the VIX index, VIX dot X. And this, to me, I'm just treating it initially as a shorter term position because it's counter to what we are in for the intermediate term position, which I don't think is quite done yet. So if you're looking at the VIX index, which is at 18 right now, the move that we had with going to lower lows in, in almost all the indices should have seen the volatility index at least test the 21 to 22 area close to the high of the 9th of May, 23.38. That high was, it was a little a bit of a wonder for me why it went that high under the actual economic conditions and the, what was being discussed. It was almost the same as that. Where was that crazy one that went to 50? Remember this one that went to 50.30? Back in February of 2018, it was an absolute mystery, higher yields and all that. But the news itself wasn't anywhere close as bad as even the one that came much later with yields, tariffs, China, the Saudis, right there on in December of 2018. Plus, you, you, you had a really interesting phenomenon because um, the Fed had committed themselves to a number of moves to the upside, and that went to 36.20. So this move to 23.38 on the on the ninth is the one that I thought was suspect. This is the one that I thought would actually move because it sounded a lot worse a few days ago, and it didn't. It only went to 19 something. So I'm looking at the VIX index as saying there's a disparity. It's number one. The TLT in this very powerful leg D looks a little overboard to me. And it could pull back, but I'm going to make this. I have been saying it on my show, the Target Technicians Hour, at noon every day, and to my subscribers to my opening call, my daily newsletter, that as long as the TLT is holding well, and that's stochastic, which is at 95% in the daily chart, if it flattens out at 93%, but holds in the mid 90s, that is going to say that rallies will probably fail as we come back and do re retesting in the major key, the key. Indices like the Dow, the S&P, the NDX 100, and the IWM, the Russell 2000, because it doesn't mean that we've gone to an extended leg D that you suddenly have to make a V-shape. What is a V-shape? A reversal. A V-shape reversal is what on earth, what chart was I looking at a short while ago that I was asked about? Uh, a C L was a crude oil. Yep, crude oil. Here's the, the pattern that I talk about right here. It's the pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. It looks like an uppercase A. Let me just type that in right here. Always go A, and then I give it a nice, uh, there we go. So now I'm going to give it in the text. I'm going to go to red, make it font, goes all the way to 48. And then I put this right here, and you can see exactly what I mean. Straight up and straight down, we look at it like the Eiffel Tower, up, down, a little angle to the ups, big angle to the upside, big angle to the downside. Looks like an uppercase A, and how it tests the left side low is really important. What well, was the chart that I was looking at that had a perfect one just a short while ago? Does Oh, was it Wood? W-O-O-D? No, it wasn't. 
All right, doesn't matter. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, as we say, um, the E-mini on the short-term basis, let me just show you here, has gone to a peak G in the two-minute chart, a leg D in the five-minute chart. I would not be surprised if it, when the market opens, this is a sudden pullback and then a move to the upside in the E-mini futures of 21, 22 at 27.71, the E-mini and uh, five-minute chart has gone to a D, but the 10 minutes is only a leg B, and that should, over the period of the morning, should, should get to a leg D. We'll be watching that closely. Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry Pesavento. Uh, trade what you see. This is uh, the break before the market opens at 9.30 Eastern time. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes, four minutes, three minutes, and then we'll do the opening of the day. We'll be back in a moment. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back, and the market is open. The Dow is up. Oh, here we go. Let me just do this in sequence. INDU. The Dow is up 190. Uh, Dow is up 212. Um, as we start the open of the day, the S&P is coming up and it turns on the bend and it is up 23 at 27.67, having made a low yesterday of, oops, I forgot to type that in. Yesterday, it's gone from 29.49 in the uh, the high of the 1st of May, 29.49, down to 27.44. That's 200 points. That's a, that's a huge move, 2,000 points in the Dow, 2,200 points in the S&P. So it needs to get about 23.78 
27, 78, the 200 period moving average, and there's a whole bunch of resistance. Target points and resistance between 27, 78, 27, 88 is next, the pink nine period exponential moving average. 2806 is going to be the big kahuna to, to push over. And as far as the weekly is concerned, needs a little more time to get the technicals to turn up and price. So we'll see how that works out. The QQQ is following the others. Uh, the others are now up 0.87 and 0.90. And what is the QQQ? Up 1.21%, up $2 at 172.13. In the middle, just a little bit above the middle of yesterday's very ugly candle, uh, nervousness about uh, testifying candle. And it's 169.27 was the low and it's trading up one, at 171.97. I like that. That's good. A lot of work needs to be done for it to get to the 179s over the, in June. That's all I'm going to say. But any re, retest that closes under 168 in the next week or so will be very poor action. This is a very much needed um, oversold bounce that we're seeing. Uh, we're also looking at the IWM, the Russell 2000, which has been lagging in the chart formation, in the weekly chart. But actually, yesterday, in a way, was leading to the upside in terms of the candle. Today, it's up 1.13 percent, up $1.66 and 148.06. Nice action. Look at the V-shaped pattern in the on-balance volume. Look at the V-shaped pattern in the stochastic going for, to 9 percent. This says to me that the, there's a chance. I, I, I didn't want to do it for subscribers today, but it's something I'm looking at. There is just a chance that over the coming, let's say, three to four weeks, we're going to see whether the Russell 2000 small caps act a little bit better than the multinational and the much heavily weighted international stocks in the other indices. So that's going to be important. Let's look at the XLF, because the XLF is also kind of key right now with interest rates, etc. up 0.36, up 1.39 percent at 26.55. Nice bounce. That's what I say to the subscribers. I'm expecting some kind of bounce in the sector. So we're looking at uh, it holding a very important trend line support in the weekly chart. Look at that. Just a simple trend line holding the support. MACD hasn't yet crossed the negative because it's a weekly chart. We have to wait for Friday. We're going to be watching that closely to see what happens in the S&P Select Financial Spider. Now, let me just get to this. I had a question about GBTC. Now, remember, I, I, just a moment ago, I was talking about the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. This particular pattern looks like an uppercase A. Well, Bitcoin hit 38.71 back in Dece November, December. What was it, November or was it December? It was, in fact, November, December of 2017. I remember discussing this intensely over the next month and a half on my show saying, I had a neighbor who was talking about Bitcoin. He said, I missed the dot-com bubble. I missed the real estate bubble. I am not missing out on this, <laughs> on this uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I'm, I'm deep into Bitcoin. Um, and I said, yeah, I've got to be a little careful. I, uh, I, it looks to me like there's a little toppy here <laughs> that was at a peak D in the daily. Uh, and anyway, it kind of come, came down a little bit from 38.71 down to $3.66. I would say that's a bit of a 90% or more decline. So now it's had a spectacular run, going from the $3.60 low to the most recent high three days ago of 12.58. Let me type that in. 12.58. I think it peaked D in the Chapman wave um, here, the daily, uh, testing the 14 period moving average of 10.38. Straining right now. Not, whoops. Testing. How could that be? It's at 9.95, and I've got this at 10.38. Where's the price? Has it, has it traded today? Today's the third. Where's the fourth? I don't see the price. All right, well, the price will be there. 9.95, uh, so it's down here somewhere. It hasn't shown up on the chart. Peak E possibly this week in the weekly chart. If you don't mind, I'm just going to do this Chapman Wave automated, um, automated, uh, projections, uh, GBTC. Yeah, look at this. So 11.49 was the resistance. It went right through it. Even on the weekly, I don't have anything. But as support, I have 10.51. It's just taken that out. So yeah, I. I so the question is, um, Basil, thoughts on GBTC? My thoughts are twofold. One is, when was it? Was it Goldman Sachs? 
some big uh, kahuna came out with the, saying uh, that there was, uh, they liked the, the whole area. And that was somewhere around April the 1st-ish. I thought it was April Fool's joke, April the, April the 3rd. And um, it, it just kept going. And my, so my first thought was, wow, I really missed that. Because for subscribers, I'm saying, I'm afraid of this for, 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 for you, for you um, because overnight anything can happen. Uh, but certainly going from 366 to 1258, even a pullback, even a 50% pullback says that it's way off the bottom. So my, my answer is, I think it's, in, I definitely think it's, it's obvious. It's in play. Before it wasn't in play, it just went sideways for a long time. Now it's in play, but I also think that money um, from the MACD and stochastic, money's going to be coming out of it for a little while. And I would not be surprised if the $8.20 to $7.20, this 200-period exponential moving average and the 50-period moving average area will be tested at some point, and then I think it's worth looking at it. So on the shorter term, no, I don't see anything just yet. Uh, so I think that was, oh, the next question was Baba, Baba, which is Alibaba, and Alibaba right now is trading at 150.77, up 90 cents. It has, it's got that peak D in the weekly chart, it has this lowercase h pattern in the monthly chart. And as a Chinese company, Alibaba Group Holdings, it's what is like a, a Google, uh, it's gone to an E, and then it goes peak A, B, C, D. And then it has another, look, it has another a short term. Let me just do this real quickly. And then there's another buy mode right there, buy signal to buy mode. It goes peak A, peak B, peak C. And there's your peak D right there. So it makes a peak D on the daily at about 190 uh, four-ish, five-ish, and then it comes down very sharply. That's a peak D in the weekly. I would say hold off on anything with Alibaba. If you're short, that's great, because the 143, 200-period exponential moving average, I think, would be a target for me based on the way it's gapped down and it's just kept coming. It's just, it looks very weak, 4.9% in the stochastic. That's very, very weak. That's the equivalent of, uh, um, that's the equivalent of 93.5%. On the upside, I'd say that's very strong, but it was on the way up, so I'm saying it's very weak on the way down. So that's that. Next thing, I just want to say the Dow is up 243. Um, uh, um, FH, I'm looking at, um, let me just see what I've got here. GF, GF is. Oh, I'm not getting that. <laughs> HE, oh, all these uh, uh, contracts, I can't get them right now. During the break, I will do that. Oh, cattle and hog, let me do live cattle as we go out. Live cattle trading right now, up 0.67. I'm going to do wheat, soybeans, and corn as soon as we return. Dow's up 250, 50, 35. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors distributor for side fund services llc the bull bear binary option hour next on tfnn hi folks uh, what was i looking at just a moment this is basil chapman sitting for larry pace events a live cattle is that what i was looking at uh live cattle yes live cattle i don't see anything right now it's in a down, major downtrend to, to start significantly move other than bounces. It's at 103.3. Uh, live cattle continuous contract. It needs to get above 105 and 106 resistance and start to trade in the 108s. And it needs to do that. It needs speed. So I'm saying by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, if it's, if it's trading under 101, that's really poor. But if it's able to rally, it's the 105, 106 level that it needs to get above. And then this ugly candle from last week, even if you get halfway, that takes you to 106 and it's still an ugly, ugly candle. I don't see anything just yet. And uh, live hogs, uh, LH, I look at LH is uh, live, live, live hogs continuous contract. This is a little bit better uh, in that it's trying to, at 84.37, it's trying to establish some kind of a base. The stochastic is at 15%, trying to flatten out. On balance volume is about to turn up. Uh, um, the MACD is still quite weak, but it is making a W formation. It needs to get above 88.50, and it's at 84.3 right now. That's a big move up, considering that it's had two red candles to the downside from that level. That makes it, it will be a counter trend move but then a really important upside rally if it can trade in the 90.70 to 91.30 area. This is live hogs, and it has to do that by Thursday of next week at the latest. Um, we're talking about Thursday of next week. Is that next week? Is it? I've got a week to go. Uh, June, yeah, June the 12th, a week from, what is today? Tuesday, a week from tomorrow. I'm doing a webinar. It's going to be called The Tide. What am I mean by the tide? And that's what I'm discussing. What do I mean? I'm talking about, I'm talking about how you can identify the, in different time frames what key indices or key patterns can give you a sense of the tide. Remember what I we've been watching someone in the den, one of our wonderful uh, traders that we have in the den, where he's shorted the S and P over and over for weeks, and it's just been building up an incredible kitty. I mean, on a one day basis. He's managed to get enough shorts to, to really uh, build a huge uh, profit margin. And it's just been admirable the way he identified the tide, saying we're going down and I'm not going to go long. I'm going to go short. And that's the way you've got to be, you've got to be stubborn about it. You've got to identify and then stick with the trade. Because if you're short, I've got a beautiful chart. I can't find it right now. It'll take a little time. Um, in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology uh, CD book available at TFNN, where I show a pattern that's going up, and but I draw the arrow going down. It means that someone, if you keep shorting when you're on the way up, you can do quick trades, but anything else, the tide going up, is just gonna wipe you out. Identify the trade. And that's what I'm talking about. How can you identify the tide? One of the reasons why we did go short the Dow, um, 
right the day before the uh, recovery high on the 22nd, the recovery high is at 23 to 26,691, is that it seemed to me that I would be getting a tide based on the failing MACD and stochastic that could have depth to it and strength to it, which is exactly what's happened. Even now, I'm looking at a chance of a rally. So we're only playing the rally on a short-term basis because I think there's going to be further testing based on the patterns that I'm looking at. If there isn't, we'll have to just deal with that. But at this particular minute, moment, the tide appears still to be weighted towards going to low tide. We haven't quite finished going to low tide. All right, so enough with that. Question I had here is, uh, how does the chin look? The chin should be quite low. Let me just go to this. I've got a thing I call the Chapman Wave Chin Gauge. It isn't really mine. It is Richard Arms' uh, whole procedure. I just use particular numbers. I don't see any numbers here that give me any clue either way. So nothing there, nothing to see there, folks. Um, and the question I had here was SRPT. So, sir, sir, I was going to say serendipity. So, rep the therapeutics. There's been an incredible stock. We once saw it go down to the single digits, down to like 0.35 or something, and it got resurrected. And the darn thing went all the way to 100 and almost 180. It's trading out 115, just a sideways range. Now, the question I asked about it, Bob, I'm going to say that you could treat this as a rectangle formation. And you know what I say about rectangle formations? They can last a lot longer than your patients. The way to do it is, and at some point you will be wrong. It will tell you very clearly you're wrong. But you want to be trading from the bottom, this area at 117 to 100 and, uh, 113. That's kind of the buy zone. And then you want to either be getting out or getting short in the 122 to 124 area with about a three-point stop. And it's the way it's been going for months since um, since the low was made in in, in March at 113.51, and then that big spike up. That's an aberration. I'm calling the the, the level of 125 uh, the resistance. So even here, you could treat it as a, a trade. It needs to get to 120, the four, the 200 period orange 200 period moving average. Once it goes above that. You're going to get yourself ready to start thinking about shorting. You can lighten up. That's the only way to trade it. I don't see this as being the big move to the upside yet. When it does that, it'll so quickly move to the 128, 132 area. It'll probably be in one week. It'll just go from a low to, to that level. But until it breaks out and goes to 126, it's a stuck in the range. And range can last a lot longer than your patience and certainly a lot longer than your money if you keep thinking it's going to break out and then it goes all the way back down. Then you think it's going to break down and it starts going up. Just cheat it as a little ping pong ball stuck in a tube, and the tube is a horizontal tube. That's the only way I would play. I would even cheat it, Bob, because I don't know if you do this. Use options. Look, it's at 116. You could buy 120. Uh, we've got another, what, for June. Another week to go? Two weeks to go? Yeah, two weeks. You could cheat it. You could do options. You could do... You can do other ways, but I'm, I'm saying that's the way it looks. And at this particular point, even if it pulls back to 114, 113, it's still within the range that says it should go up. Now, my only qualm here is that the MACD is now negative, and every other time it held beautifully the, the slow-moving average, and the stochastics pull back very sharply, but that allows the stochastic to bounce. So just treat it as something that you – that's the range. So if you're looking for the big move, I just don't think it's just yet. Okay. Um, das Wit. That's my only French that I ever learned. Das Wit is uh, 510 and a quarter and a half. This is wheat. Continuous contract down almost $10. In leg seats gone from 418 to today's high of 529. I mean, 100 points. That's 25%, 20, uh, 23% gain. That's fantastic. So it's pulling back here. Uh, 501 is the 200 period exponential moving average. There's a bunch of moving averages in that area, but it is leg C. I suspect it will make a D, but most of the move might be done, uh, at least for now. Uh, so it could go maybe to the 531 area, maybe 532, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's where it stalls. Soybeans, continuous contract up seven and three quarters at 886 and, and, and three quarters. Uh, this is in leg C, very nice action. The MACD is now flattened out at 87%. That suggests that soybeans could go a little higher. Look at the single leg A in the weekly chart. And corn, as we say here in the, the Boston area, corn. Corn is trading at 
429.5 up five and a quarter. It has uh, stalled in this upper range, but the Mankey and Stochastic are good. I think it will go to a leg C above um, the high of 438 was, that was made on the 29th, holding very nicely here. So for our subscribers, we have the, fu the grain futures, I'm um, sorry, the grain ETF. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So looking at the E-mini, it's up 17, right? That peak E, this is what I call a Chapman Wave, Rogue Wave. Why? Because from that peak D right then, the two-minute chart, look, the MACD and Stochastic were fading. And then you got this aberrational thing. This is what happens in the open very often. It pulls back, it has a spike up, and then it goes into the, the direction that it really wanted. And then it popped up to 27.74 area, and bam, it turns around and it's trading now 27.65. Uh, that's in the two minute. The five minute also made a peak E, same sort of thing. I suspect it's going to, there's going to be kind of buying pressure, but a chunk of that buying pressure might have been done now. There has to be a whole new bunch. Of, of of strength that comes in, I you know you're at the mercy here of of geopolitical uh, and and other technicals that are very important. Oh, talking about that, how could I not have done this? I, I wanted to show gold. Gold right now is didn't I show it? No, I didn't. Gold has had a spectacular move from the uh, 1280 level to today's high of 1334, and uh, it's holding quite nicely. The MACD hasn't gotten to over 80% yet is a 79.5. It needs to hold above 83, 84% to for gold to, to, to maintain this upward move. There's a cup formation that says that 
there's a channel wave inside track um, resistance level. It just hit that, that green line right there in the cup formation. If gold by Thursday is able to test 1348, there's a good chance that it's going to go to a new recovery high above the high of the 20, week of the 22nd of February at 1361.6. It could go above that. That'll be really important. That'll also help the monthly chart a lot. The dollar, I, I think I did that, maybe I did it in the update. The dollar is up 0.4, just four uh, pips right now. Uh, it's holding quite nicely, actually, considering what gold has done. So uh, we still remain long the dollar from April of 2018 at 90. I think that the dollar is the, is the currency de jour. I think it's the one that's telling us about our economy. So far, that's true. We'll see what happens. Have a wonderful day. Basil Chaplin sitting in for, uh, for Larry Pazavento. And have a wonderful day because Tom, Tommy is coming up. And then think or swim, then I come up at noon. And then you've got Steve, Dave, and Tom O'Brien. Have a wonderful day. Hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you.